because I'd know Keith Kirkhoff and he'd know somebody else. Uh, I mean, I don't know if it went down three or four people or what, but all of a sudden, he'd have a fifth for you. Well, just to hand it to you, I mean, by car, you know. I mean, you weren't hauling 50 gallons. You just heard stories that you would just walk out to your car and you'd find it in there. That happened, too. I mean, you know, so then uh, they didn't sell it to you, you know. That transaction took place before that, like behind Grimm and Vinky's Tavern in Manning, Iowa. That happened a lot. That was a drop-off place, okay. Uh, the Helber... The Chicken Inn at Elbert, Iowa was, a, was another. Them are two places I got it dropped off for me. So, so it was different ways, you know, that, uh, that it would happen, you know. Did they call it Templeton Rye back then? Did oh, yeah. I mean, no. Mm. Well, it was Templeton Rye, you well, know. Talking to people in the, about, about the 30s and such, they didn't really call it Templeton Rye then. They just called it whiskey, and it didn't matter whether it was made in Brito or Templeton or. Okay, yeah. whenever I. Sorry. Whenever well, I. Well, Whenever I did it, you know, or got any, you know, of course, yeah. I wasn't a big drinker, you know, it was, it was more to see if we'd get away with it. I think that was the biggest thing when, when you're 20 years old, you know, but, uh, but I had a source where I pretty well knew where it was coming from, and then it was up by Helber, Iowa, so, so I, uh, so how would, um, how would you pay for that, how much was it? Oh, we generally know that a pint, we'd pay... 10 or 15 bucks. Of course, that was a lot of money back back then, you know. So, uh, fifth, you know, if you paid $25, that had to be good whiskey in those days. Okay. So, but, uh, but you always, the transaction was always made first. <clears throat> so. Anything else?